Look who's there. There she is. There she is. The only ex-wife I talked to. <laughs> How many are there? I forgot. Uh, well, I mean, no, I, excuse me. I talked to, talk to Susan as well, but only on occasion. I talk to you regularly. Yes. Well. And the first one, I can't even remember her name. You know, I mean. Oh, uh, come on. And I don't know if she's still alive. You know, she could be dead for all I know. You know, so. You know, at our age, that's not impossible. Oh, it's not impossible at all. So anyway, uh, this is my uh, ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett, who runs as time goes by or time goes by dot net. No as, yeah. No as. Time goes by dot net, which is a site all about aging, and it's funny. But what I decided to do, you know, I got to do the show on Sunday, which I've invited you to come on, uh, which is a national program. It's on 50 stations across the country. Uh, radio stations or internet? Stations? Radio stations. Radio. Okay. Cool. This is a radio. It's Westwood One, and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I have my reservations about doing it, but that's a whole other story. So I figure out, what am I going to talk about? And I finally decided, what am I going to do that is controversial? Uh, and, and this guy runs a rather soft show. It's not really about politics or anything else. But what could I do that would really shock people? And I thought I would break a huge show business broadcasting taboo. And I'm going to tell everybody how old I am. You've done that on our little show. Well, on our little show, I've done it. But I'm doing this on a national show. And I'm saying this, this is something that will ruin my career. Okay? Not that well, I've know, got one now. Depending on how long someone has been listening to yeah. you, they could guess your age, maybe. Well, no, but most of the people probably will not be aware of my wonderful being. I'm not asking people to phone up. I'm not going to tell them how old I am till the end of the show. But I'm also not asking them to call up and tell me how, what, how old they think I am. Because all I have to do is go over to Wikipedia and they'll find it out. Right? right? Yes. But, uh, Nothing's I, a but, secret anymore. But then I want to do this whole thing about, <clears throat> about aging and about not being hireable and uh, not people not taking you seriously and a whole bunch of, you know, just a whole, you know, you know, the, 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 yes. the you know, what goes on. You've been reporting it now for years. And so I'm going to have you on to kind of uh, uh, talk more about aging and about that whole process and, and what the problems are, you know, so. But, uh, 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 yeah, I'm going to make it like I'm breaking the biggest taboo in show business, which it really is because, you know, movie stars don't come out and say how old they are. Well, they don't either, and it's also... Um, it, it covers just about every every place you go, and it includes diversity laws. When someone writes laws or rules, depending on whichever it is, yeah. about diversity in whatever their organization is, yeah. they talk about skin color and ethnicity and abledness or disabledness and so on, but they never stick age in there or hardly ever stick age in that list of what constitutes diversity to them. It's really the last, the last... A prejudice that you're allowed to have. Well, and if you watch the late night comedians, yeah. all of them, yeah. both the early ones at 11:30 and the ones at 12:30, almost every night, every one of them will have a joke about being old that isn't nice to old people. Almost every week, or every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, what was and, it? And by the way, I really like Seth Meyers a lot. I enjoy lately Jimmy Fallon some more. Once in a while, I like Stephen Colbert. But they're the worst offenders in that area. I'll, I'll tell you who I don't think is that way, because I get sensitive when I hear that, is uh, 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 Jimmy Kimmel. No, no, I meant Kimmel. You meant Kimmel. I'm, no, I'm glad you didn't mean, oh, thank God you didn't mean Fallon. I was about ready to think less of you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Kimmel, Kimmel is pretty decent that way. He's pretty decent all the way around. Except for that. Except for that. Well, you know, uh, even last night on the MTV Awards, which obviously is for young people, all right, uh, the comedian, the black comedian, I'm trying to remember his name now. Oh, I saw the story about him, yes. Oh, no, no, I saw, yeah. I saw about one of them talking about Trump. Yeah, and he said, and they say, he said, everybody, Neil, don't, be told what to do by an old white man. Yeah. So he See what I mean? So he got, he, he, got he got racist twice in one yeah. sentence. You know. I mean, uh, the word old is the throwaway nasty thing you can say about people and get away with. And it's always with a negative connotation. Nobody says old in the way they say young. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and so there we, and that affects everything. I mean, you know, you don't really want chapter and verse from me today on how it affects the quality of medical care you get and all kinds of things like well, that. Well, I, it, it, oh, quality of medical care. Uh, I don't know about quality, but I do yes, know that do, the doctors, when you're old, say, what pill do you want? You can have anything. No, <laughs> it's not that simple. They don't do just that. Um, and it's not that, but you do get, you will, th there are certain reasons, let's say, for example, for certain surgery, depending on what your other problems are, not to be done. But a lot of people just dismiss ki certain kinds of treatment for old people just because of the number of their age. Yeah. You know? Um, but isn't it, it also in because... In the big surgery I had last year for yeah. my cancer, um, later one of the doctors told me that they at my, my age was 76 then, that they might not have done it. It's huge. They cut you open down the middle and it's 12 hours of surgery and it goes on and on and it's, you know, months of recovery. They said, but you were in so healthy and in such good shape, we felt we could do it. And, you know, we know it turned out well. But a lot of places wouldn't even offer that. Wow. For age. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, well, I think they're also afraid that you're not going to make it because it is such a, your, your operation, for instance, was very invasive. You know, it was about yeah. as, invas as invasive. <laughs> you might say. Well, they, cu they cut you open and then gutted you like a carp, you know. Yes, uh, much. You know, uh, uh, so they, they sometimes feel that, well, you know, maybe she can't, it, it, maybe her fault. But that's what I was just telling you. They said that, I mean, the doctors I had are, are really, it's a whole, the whole medical center is really terrific. And they weighed against, you know, what the dangers might be for age against my health. Yeah. My, and whatever, you know, and I'd, I'd never had a, a major, any kind of major health problem before. So they thought that I was strong enough to do it. And here I am 14 months later. So I guess they yeah. were right. Yeah, well, they, they, they did a good job. But yeah. not every place will even consider it and, and do what they need to do to figure out if it would be safe. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be wearing a bikini to a beach anytime soon. No, but. I'm not. But you know what? <laughs> I, I, you know, I really should tell the surgeon this, because you know, they cut me from here to here, you know, straight down the middle. Yeah. And I just, you know, I have these huge amounts of, they came with a place, window, um, mirrors in the dressing room, yeah. bathroom kind of area. And I made a point. I never looked in the mirror. I didn't want to see what this looked like. Yeah. But a couple of months ago, I guess as I was coming up on the year anniversary, changing clothes, I looked. This guy should be a plastic surgeon. You can barely see the scar. Really? Yeah. Really? I thought it was I mean, like there you know when look, people when people go get open no big deal. people get open heart surgery they get they have what they call a zipper you know. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, in the beginning, I kept telling people that, you know, if, if, if this ever gets healed, maybe I'll go out and get a zipper tattoo, but to cover it, but, uh, but it's, it's there. I mean, I, I'm not going to put a bikini on ever again for other reasons, but, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I was astonished at how terrific it looks. It's barely there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Pretty That's cool. terrific. Well, anyway, now what I'm saying is, is that. The, the premise that I'm using on this show is I'm going to talk about all the ways in which my life, for instance, has been affected by aging. And that at 78, I said, you probably can't tell by my voice how old I am because my voice is still pretty, pretty young in, in nature. It's not really old. Um, uh, <clears throat> unless today, because I'm a little hoarse from having swallowed the wrong way and almost coughed on something. It, it went down the windpipe. Anyway, th enough of that. Now I'm sounding like an old person, uh, but that I, that, you know, that I can still do my job because here I am doing it, right? But there's no way anybody's going to hire me. You, you know? know, I always thought that radio I, I gave up. would be I, more insulated against that because not counting a, an internet, you know, video that we do, you can do radio. Nobody knows how old you are. Yeah, they can't well, see you. You know something? I honestly believe I lost my job at Sirius partially to age. Uh, be, and I know that. How do I know that? Because the most ageist thing that ever happened to me happened as they were getting rid of me. They, I had a, uh, uh, what do you call it, when they pay you money uh, for a couple of months after they let you go. Right. I had a... Uh, Whatever they call uh, it. If, I had something like 16 weeks of pay that mm -hmm. I had accumulated over the years. 
to get mm -hmm. one. So before they would write me a check for it, I had to sign a piece of paper saying I wouldn't sue them for age discrimination. That's right. And I said to them, you realize this in and of itself is age discrimination because you wouldn't ask a younger person to fill this out. And they didn't have anything to say. And they said, if, well, you know, if you don't there, sign, there if you are don't laws sign it, well, um, age discrimination in the in the employment area. But over the years, and not, I'm not saying President Trump, I mean, previous to him too, they've been weakened and weakened and weakened. And even if they hadn't been weakened, think about it. If you believe that strongly that um, you've got problems at work or you've been fired due to age discrimination. You could use these, you can go to the EEOC, the Equal Opportunity Employment Organization, it's mm -hmm. a government agency, or you could sue. But the difference is, is that most companies have lawyers on call, full-time lawyers even, who work for them. And so they don't care what those guys, as long as those guys are working, you know, they're putting in their time, they can handle the case. You have to pay a lawyer, what, hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour. Right. So hardly any employee ever gets a chance to apply those laws. So, and that's another form of discrimination, though, yeah. this one from the government. Well, I think that if I had decided to turn out, turn around and sue them, I still could have, because the fact if that they... If you have the money, the, you'll run out. The, they'll just string it out yeah, forever. The fact, that they were, the fact that they were holding up my check, you know, if I didn't sign this thing. That's a different thing. thing. But, yeah. but, um, but my point is, is that an, 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 a, an, a lawyer that's got a job with this com company, he's got whatever number of cases he's working on, he can just string it out with all kinds of legal stuff forever and ever until you've run out of money to pay your lawyer. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we were having, you know, we're kind of having that problem with this apartment house. I mean, this thing kept, keeps getting strung out and strung out and strung out. We put out about $50,000 in mm. uh, in lawyers fees mm. you know however we haven't been paying rent for five years so you it's pretty cheap rent we've been paying <laughs> you know so, i hope they don't come and make you pick it pay it all comes back. comes about no they won't they can't there's they don't we don't we don't owe anybody any money they don't we don't they don't have a piece of paper on us say, that we signed obligating ourselves to them okay you know and and we were willing to settle this five years ago they're the ones that keep it going you know, so I mean, it's just on and on and on. But anyway, you're right about that. That they will lawyer you out and try and prevent you from from getting. Oh, that's a good. I like that phrase, lawyer you out. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, but they'll lawyer you out until you can't you can't afford to keep the right. going after them. So it's not worth it to you. It's especially not worth it. Wouldn't be worth it to me for 16 weeks worth of severance. That was the term. That's the word you want. Yes. Uh, six. You know, for 16 weeks of severance. So you know, it's it's. But uh, I'm just going to go through this whole thing about. You and know. by the way, let me interrupt just a second. And then you're the cap on. You're the cap on the hour. You know, of, of talking about oh, this okay. from a very professorial uh, the, sense. Um, the thing about signing the signing the paper that you don't you're yeah. not what about age discrimination yeah, or right. whatever it was that it said that's very similar to the recent news over the past week or two about the NDAs that the White House requires yeah that, that there's I mean that you're a government employee for heaven come on you, nobody can tell you what you can say I don't think an NDA would hold up at the White House that's the point. That's well, what he we doesn't don't realize. Know. No one's well, ever tested nobody's it's ever done. Been done nobody, Trump. nobody's ever done it before Trump. Yeah. You know, NDAs are something, admittedly, that you do in business. Okay, you want to keep your company secrets, and you don't want people to disclose the nature of the business. Well, I question those two, but that's a long conversation. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's a it's a better it's a better argument because it's private companies. Whereas in this case, if it th is, this is the people's. This is the people's company. You can't have people signing non-disclosure agreements, especially if somebody sees something going wrong and they want to complain about it. You know? Mm-hmm. That's terrible. You know. So anyway, you know, this is uh, this is a quite a it's quite a, uh, a a thing we deal with with aging. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the whole thing up, and now I'm going to tell you, I'm really old. <laughs> okay, I'm really old, and and um, uh, you, you know if if I told you in advance how old I was, you probably wouldn't even listen to the show. 
<laughs> okay. Well, not me. Well, not you, but those listeners. They'll, they'll make a presidential uh, decision. And I'm going to say, now by me revealing my age to an audience like this, what I'm doing is I'm also saying to the industry, you know, that I'm that age. Yes. I mean, how many people uh, lie about their age as they get older? Practically everybody, if they want to keep working. Well, and because of what we were just discussing, especially in the workplace, do you know that, that age discrimination in the workplace begins as early as 40 for women, yep. um, for men, yep. but as early as 35 for women. Really? Really? And, you know, think about this, that you go to school, maybe even go to graduate school, right? So you don't get, you're not ready to go to work full time until you're nearly 25 years old, right? Yeah. So you finally go, you get this terrific job somewhere, you've got all this education. Now, of course, people have to uneducate you and teach you how we really work in whatever business it is, which usually happens. But now by the time you hit 35 to 40, you really know what you're doing. By then you're really good at what you do, oh, whether yeah. it's lawyer, doctor, yeah. Indian chief, it doesn't matter. And that's when they decide to stop hiring you, when you really got the chops. Well, when I was a kid, people retired at 65 and they held a big party for them. Because they had hit you got 65. A gold watch and you got a gold watch and everything. There were a lot of those, because they held they held on to people. They they the older people in the company were the continuity. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, institutional memory really important. By the way, you know, I worked at Barbara Walters Specialist for 11 years. Mm -hmm. For up to 10 years afterwards, because I had been there so long. Yeah. For up to 10 years afterwards, I would occasionally get a call from somebody I'd never heard of then working there mm -hmm. or in some other capacity, but they were looking for certain things about the you know, tape, for instance, about Barbara Walters specials or something. They would call me and ask where I thought they could find them. And I usually could answer um, because they were usually in some you know file cabinet in the back room or something was still there. Nobody had ever looked. Yeah. But... I mean, and that's just the stupidest reason for institutional memory. You know? Yeah, there are tons of. But reasons. but but you know, I mean, these people were the were the continuity at the company, and mm -hmm. also by the time they got to that age, they knew everything about that business you could know. They were they were experts. Uh, today we don't have experts because we're we weed them out too fast. You know, how many companies could we you? We don't even hire them anymore. You know the gig economy. I'll tell you. People work from home for, you know, for X number of weeks for something and move on to the next one. My wife is maybe three years younger than I am. Okay? Maybe. Yes, she is three years younger than I am. Be careful you don't slip until your age already. Yeah, you know, but she works, <laughs> she works for the Chinese. They don't care. Uh-huh. They don't care. As long as she can do the job, that's all that matters. You know? Uh, I've, I've seen... She's always worried that, well, they might find out how old I am. And I said, they don't, believe me, they know you're not 65, you know, but they are Chinese and they look upon age in a different way. They look, they venerate it, you know. And I, I said, so, you know, you're very lucky you're working for the Chinese. And they also pay good money, too. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, so you can work as long as you want in those in that situation. I guess you know nobody's telling her to retire. In fact, they keep saying we we hate the day that you're going to retire because you know you do such a great job of keeping this place going. Mm -hmm. You know so, but I mean, it's it's difference in cultures too. I think in China you'll see people working to a later age. I in in the United States you're lucky if you can cough your way to fifty. That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. You know, and I lasted in this business. Uh, my, I had my former producer Albert staying with me for a couple of days, and he last night said to me, he said, I, because I said, well, you know, I don't know if I was that successful. He said, not successful. He said, I don't know anybody who lasted as long being on the air as you. He said you kept going well into your seventies. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. And most people are out of it way before that. I suppose a big part of it, what you mentioned early on, is what happens to your voice. Yeah. Um, is that it becomes more difficult both to speak clearly and loudly enough. And, right. Um, 
and 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 difficult to listen to because it's got a, I don't know old people, some old people get a fuzzy quality and you have to listen extra hard to make sure you some days some that. days when I when I'm <clears throat> when it's like there's a lot of pollen out no, I we've got I, smoke I can get that way fires, oh you oh, you got the forest fires there yeah yeah and you got them California in, gets a lot of talk but there are some here and also I saw maps online where it's being blown, you know, either south from Washington state or north from California, depending on which way the wind is going. And there was an astonishing US map that showed some from, I guess, around the Rockies, a huge thing of smoke being uh, pushed by the wind toward you in the East Coast. Yeah. Wow. So you don't have to be right. There's an unbelievable video this morning online of a father and son driving through a forest fire. Yes, I saw that. Isn't that amazing? I saw that, and then they finally got down to a boat and were taken away. Yeah. It's astonishing. Yeah. So, anyway, so... Um, what well, was really astonishing about it was there was a little bit of bickering between the father and son, but in general, there's flames all around them on this picture, and they're incredibly calm about it. Yeah. Well, you know what's really terrible? Our old fires. Our what? Old fires. I don't know. Uh, it's a joke. We were talking about age and being discriminatory, and I said there's nothing oh. worse than an old fire. Okay. Okay. I, I was just trying to lighten the, the know, tone up I from know, you and your being singed by a fire talk. I know. It's funny. I know now you with the fires there. I know a woman who calls my show from Hawaii. She's on the island of Hawaii. Oh, they've the, got all of that. Oh, the volcano. The volcano. Although she's, the volcano's kind of quiet right now, she said. Finally, yeah. finally died. But it down. went for months, weeks, or anyway, and maybe months. Oh, yeah. Doing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, isn't nature wonderful? It really is. I mean, I looked at that volcano, and I just went, ooh. You know, I don't want to be there, but ooh. I have to tell you that I think the Northeast, like from about New York forward, mm -hmm. upward, yeah. is probably the safest place in terms of natural things yeah. that can do awful stuff to you yeah. because here of course you know in oregon and washington and northern california they're always predicting that next week is the big earthquake and um and there's a lot of flooding depending yeah, right. on the time of year and what's gone on you have hurricanes in the southern part of the united states and up the east coast you have incredible snow and flooding in the midwest depending on the season right. and so on but um but there's not much you know, the, most hurricanes kind of spin out of, you know, they're done by the time they get as far north as yeah. New York. So the most that you guys have is snow in the winter. Well, you don't really well, have well, bad weather other than that. New Jersey went apoplectic a couple of years ago when we had that hurricane here that hit oh, here. So we did, we did have Sandy. Uh, but when you compare it to the way it hit New Orleans, nothing, right. nothing was going on in New Jersey, you know, for as bad as it was. So, yes, you're right. Uh, uh, this area up here, you seem somewhat protected. Yeah. Um, and there's, and uh, and of course, in, in a big city, of course, no forest fires. Probably, you know. Um, I, mean, I live in an area where there are a bunch of two-story buildings, mm -hmm. and we have lots of trees around. And lately, I've begun to think, oh my goodness, when it gets really dry, do I want that many trees around me? If, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, you know, but uh, um, well, every but everywhere you live, there is some kind of the, the, you know. We could get an earthquake here. There's a fault going right to oh, Central Park. I have Park. to tell you, years and years ago, I had waked up. It was about six o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I had waked up and I was lying there thinking about getting out of bed, and I felt this rumble, rumble. No, no audio, but I felt a rumble under my bed. I'd never ever felt before. I was living on Bedford Street, and. And the subway is a block away, but I'd been there for years and I had never heard the right, subway. Right. So I didn't know what it was. Later, I get out of bed and I turn on the news and there had been an earthquake. Just, and there, it seems that there's a fault that runs, I think, if I recall correctly, somewhere along Canal Street. Well, I, heard there, I, heard, I heard there's a fault. Very, very minor, very low number. I don't remember yeah. the number. But I had no idea they occasionally have earthquakes they, in New York. They had a, have a fault that goes through Central Park. Yeah. Oh. You know, I mean, uh, you, you don't feel it, and it doesn't really go off much, you know. But when you say you you know, you know, weren't used to that rumbling, you lived in San Francisco. You know what an earthquake is. No, 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 I meant like. I wasn't. 
used to it where I lived then. Yeah. At I mean, that moment, even though the subway was a block away, I never heard it. In San Francisco, and the I only thing... I never, ever felt that, either before or since. It was the only time it happened. In in Northern California, the only thing that uh, hurricanes are good for, uh, hurricanes, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, earthquakes are good for is conversation. Because the next day, everybody goes, did you feel that last night? <laughs> you know, did it wake you up? You know, one of the things old people complain about with each other is that we don't sleep well. Mm -hmm. And when I was in high school, which is the mid-50s, um, had just moved to California, was living in Marin County. Um, I woke up one morning, and I think I was a junior in high school. I woke up one morning, and my bed was about a foot or a foot and a half from the wall. And so, you know, I'm getting up, getting ready for school, the news is on, and there had been a gigantic earthquake in the middle of the night, so much so that it moved my bed from the wall and I slept straight through it. Teenagers yeah. can sleep through yeah. anything. Yeah. Now, I used to sleep through earthquakes in San Francisco. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, look, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. See? There we go. We just kind of mumble on we, here and just, it runs. Its just two old farts chatting. Okay. Yes. So, uh, I'll see you on that show on Sunday. I'm looking forward okay. to it. And uh, uh, I'll Is see Is the entire show about aging or just a no, piece just, of it? No, uh, just the first hour. Okay. I'm going to deal oh, with it. Oh, how many hours? Three hours. Oh. But well, you what are you making a face for? Uh, I don't know. I don't, it's not... It's not <laughs> it, so why did you agree to do it? Because this guy's been good to me. So, you know, and he thinks I'm so much of me that he thinks that I'm, you know, I'm a real get you know, to replace him while he's well, not Well, you probably there. are. So, I you, know, you are. You know, I think it may even be a, uh, there's some station, Bend, Oregon, nearby you? It's off in the middle of Oregon, yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's the station in Oregon that <laughs> covers, oh, has okay. a show. It's, it's about a three-hour drive from here. Okay, so after, the, <laughs> while the show's on, do it from your car and we can li you can listen to it. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Hey, listen, see you Sunday, but in the meantime, let's see you in another couple of weeks here, Okay. Talk to you on Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett can be found at timegoesby.net. Thank you, Ronnie. Right. Bye.